people here at Fairview who have strayed from the truth and they're in that condition, so to speak? Do you care enough to confront? Do you care enough to challenge? Do you care enough to say, you know, I love you. And, and the last thing that I want to see you involved in is error when it comes to how you behave and how you live your life. So I'm going to pray for you. So I'm going to share God's word with you. I'm going to help you to see the truth so that God can use it in your life to cause you to be turned back. God is in the restoration business, but the question is, fair view, are we? Are we in the restoration business? Are we going to help our brothers and sisters in Christ to not stray from the truth of God's word? Are you going to be involved in turning your fellow believers back to God in his ways when you see them get off to the wrong path? They're there. And you can't rely upon me solely. can't rely upon the deacons and the deaconesses. God wants to use you. And some of you know right now that there's somebody you know who has strayed from the truth. And the question is, do you care? Are you like James? James says, the last thing that I want you to remember as we leave this book is that it's, you are to be involved in the loving concern of restoring a strained Christian. Some of you are here today and you're not in the category of a strained Christian. You're in the category of someone who's unsaved. You're in the category of someone who needs to be rescued from perishing because you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you're not right with God. And so you need to be restored to God. You need to return to the shepherd of your soul, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the way that you do that is by putting your faith and your trust in Christ alone for salvation. James doesn't speak directly to that in these verses. But the application is there and found in the rest of Scripture. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, you are going to experience eternity in the lake of fire because you have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. And God wants to rescue you. And he's done something about it so that you can be rescued. He sent his son into the world and he lived a perfect life and he died on the cross in your place that you might have eternal life. But there's others of you who think you're saved. You profess to be a Christian. And I would just remind you of the truth of James 2, 14 through 26. Make sure that your genuine faith manifests itself in works that God calls good. Keeping yourself spotless from the world. Showing compassion. So many times we do activities and we think the activities save us. No, God saves us by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're here, you're strained from the truth, then we would invite you also to be a part of this local church we want to be a church that loves each other enough that when somebody strays from the truth, that some other brother or sister in Christ will turn that person back. I hope if you see me straying from the truth in any area of my life, that you would love me enough not to keep me and allow me to stay in the error of my ways but that you would come and seek to turn me back. 
Christians stray from the truth. And when they do, they need to be restored. Let's pray together. Father, we ask that you would impress upon our hearts the, the very burden that James sought to impress upon the hearts of his readers in writing this very practical letter, Lord. He dealt with so many subjects that are valuable to the Christian life and important to the Christian life. And yet, when he closes his letter, he wants his readers to know that they are to be involved in the loving ministry of restoring a strained Christian. Father, I pray that that might be our heart, that that might be our burden, that that might be our concern, that when a Christian strays from the truth,